I look a little grizzled sitting here in my condo, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about yesterday's meeting, Future Free Speech Online. Um, yeah, my, my speech, going back to the Web 1.0 days, um, where I talked about some specific issues in an unusual way, gays in the military, and then later on COPA, um, filial responsibility, and more recently the power grid. I, you know, I've talked about some issues that don't get the normal attention or, or the correct arguments from the mainstream media. And even though I don't have impressive numbers, I've actually been fairly effective, cl somewhat clandestinely, in affecting what policies actually get made. I actually think it's been effective for the past 20 years. And it, yes, it is in jeopardy from all the things that have gone on, not so much the loss of net neutrality, but FOSTA, um, the European Union copyright issue, recently a bill, the United States, the CASE Act that might lead to more copyright trolling, a bunch of issues. And I keep on getting prodded to stop speaking for myself, but go back and join organizations to help other oppressed people as a way of paying my dues. I kind of wanted to respond to that. And part, part of it is, yes, um, I think we're entering a world where, again, where with like the YouTube controversy and everything, speakers probably, um, companies are probably going to be selective in who they allow to speak. And there's probably going to be something like a, a kind of informal social credit. I mean, there won't be a score, but there'll be kind of a reputation. Um, I call it paying your dues, sort of a non-monetary or sort of an attention economy that's parallel to the cyber, maybe not just a cyber, cyber currency, but the real economy, that that's probably going to come into being. I think it's mostly a matter of whether you give back as an individual for the particular privileges you've had. Um, but the left particularly wants to make this an issue of, of, of one group, members of one group paying back for the damage it did to another group. And that also plays into the way speech is regulated online. Some topics um, that are popular, that are on the extreme right, um, white nationalism are off limits. Um, there, whereas on the left, the extreme topics are not because we don't have a clear example of where you've crossed the line on the left like you, we do on the right. And there are a couple of reasons for that. On the right, um, the, the extremists on the alt-right are about excluding people. And the ideology on the left, um, communism, while it may, you know, it may punish people for being members of abusive classes in the past. It doesn't do it on the basis of, of race or nationality or any immutable characteristics, whereas on the alt-right they do. Also, people on the extreme right are presumed not to have the right to organize because what was taken from them, you know, in American history was taken from them rightfully because they didn't have a right to it before. Um, slavery and so forth. So they simply lost something they didn't never really had a right to. So we should, there is the idea that we should be making amends for that still. And there's also the idea that the alt right, and sometimes their plot, their intentions are perhaps um, fatal, you know, to bring um, fatal harm to some people, whereas on the far left, Antifa notwithstanding, there have been very few actual, very few actual deaths. There's been a lot of vandalism and, you know, hoodlinism and so forth. But there haven't, been, there hasn't really been the same kind of mass, you know, casualty outfits on the left that there have been on the alt-right. So there's some theory to that, that, it, that if you're not, you know, if you have any connection at all to it, you're the enemy and we're going to go after you. You know, we may be living in a world where individualism, the way I've gotten used to it and accounting for yourself, even in terms of social credit, isn't going to work. And that's very problematical. When an, ex when an outside influence, an outside pressure comes to bear that's unprecedented, how you respond to it, whether it's in an enemy, or whether it's, you know, a, a failure of the infrastructure, a power, the power grid or something, a failure of a way of life, global, how you respond to that in relation to other people, extreme events to, ex, to external 
um, pressure and external coercion, that's a moral issue too. So I just wanted to lay all this out. Um, we didn't cover all this in the meeting yesterday the way I would have liked to, but I'm just making a remark about it now. Thanks.